Good morning. My name is Clint Sheely. I'm one of the assistant city managers for the city of Columbia. And on behalf of our city manager, Teresa Wilson, we'd like to join you today and welcome you to our Metropolitan Wastewater Treatment Plant. For over 50 years, we've been treating the waste streams from Columbia and the Midlands at this facility and protecting the, the environment by returning clean, treated water to the beautiful Congaree River. We're here today to announce and really celebrate the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Climate Pollution Reduction Grant, recently awarded to the Central Midlands Council of Governments. I'd like to acknowledge our visitors, members of the Central Midlands Council of Governments board and staff, our project partners, local elected officials, and members of the media. And a special thanks to our City of Columbia staff that have helped coordinate this event with our friends from EPA and the Council of Governments. We're delighted to have you with us today. Today you're going to hear remarks from our 6th District U.S. Congressman James Clyburn, the United States Environmental Protection Agency Acting Region 4 Director Janine Gettle, the Central Midlands Council of Governments Board Chair and City of Columbia Council Member Will Brennan, our Mayor Daniel Rickman, and our Climate Protection Action Committee for the City's uh, Committee Chair, Bob Petrulis. And following remarks from each of these individuals, we'll have time for questions, and then we'll offer a brief facility tour for those that wish to participate. Thank you again for being here, and let's get started with our first speaker. Next up, or first up, is Bob Petrulis. Uh, Bob is currently chairperson of the City of Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee, a volunteer board that advises the City of Columbia on climate and environmental related matters. Bob got his start in environmental activism when, as a high school freshman, he played a small role in organizing the very first Earth Day in 1970 in his adopted hometown in Indiana. In addition to his work with CPAC, as we call it, Bob chairs the local chapter of the Climate Reality Project and is a member of the South Carolina Sierra Club's Executive Committee. Bob holds a PhD in higher education policy and is a consultant working with schools and universities living here in Columbia. Please welcome Bob. Thank you, Clint. Uh, good morning and, and thank you all for being here. Uh, it's great to see everyone, and this is really exciting. I'm, I'm glad to be here to help to mark this moment as the chair of CPAC. Um, I am increasingly aware of the current and projected impacts of climate change on the Midlands and how critical it is to continue to develop local capacity to respond. Uh, climate change is the challenge of the 21st century. As a high school student environmentalist in 1970, I was just becoming aware of the impacts of greenhouse gas emissions. Most of the environmental focus then was on air and water pollution, uh, pressure on uh, natural systems and wildlife. Uh, but it turns out that those were just indicators of what was to come. And uh, now with a greater emphasis on greenhouse gas emissions, on uh, environmental justice, and on other uh, aspects of, of um, the pressures that exist on global systems. Uh, it's doubly important for us to be able to operate both uh, globally and locally. Um, According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, Ad Atmospheric Administration, we just lived through the fourth hottest summer since records have been kept. Uh, and there's more to come. Here in South Carolina, average temperatures have increased about three degrees since 1970. And that may not sound like a lot, but when you think about the wild swings in temperatures and uh, the attendant uh, weather events, uh, it becomes really, really significant. There are, there are 20 more summer days with temperatures, high temperatures above 95 degrees now than there were in 1970. And that will continue uh, into the future, uh, probably with more, more days. Um, so along with the increasing heat, we've experienced some extreme weather. You probably will remember if you were here in 2015, the um, thousand year 
weather event that resulted in 20 inches of rain being dropped on this area, flooding, loss of life, damaged infrastructure, uh, tremendous costs to the community, and we're going to see more of that. Uh, so these are really daunting challenges uh, that are faced by local governments under really difficult conditions. Making sure that people have adequate shelter, cooling, food, clean water, and health care, along with increased costs of maintaining critical infrastructure, all of that is, uh, is going to increasingly have an impact on local government. Uh, and never before has the need to develop local capacity to address these challenges been so urgent. That is why the resources being provided by the EPA are so important and we are so grateful. In the coming months, thanks to these resources, we'll be able to further develop effective plans to address these existential threats while we make our cities and our state more resilient, more equitable, and ultimately, we hope, better places to live. I'm excited, and I believe we are ready to redouble our efforts. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, introduce uh, Councilman Will Brennan. Uh, Will grew up in the Shandon neighborhood in Columbia. He's a graduate of A.C. Moore Elementary, Hand Middle School, and Dreer High School, class of 98. Mr. Brennan graduated from North Carolina State University with a degree in economics and a minor in operations management. Uh, he owns Brennan Works, a design and construction company, and serves as director of project management, and project development. His responsibilities include design coordination, construction management, and other, and owner representation. Uh, he also owns a commercial real estate development firm that for, uh, focuses on historic pres preservation. Uh, latest adaptive reuse developments include the Curtis Wright Hangar in Columbia, and if you haven't been to the hunter-gatherer uh, brewery down there, you really should. Uh, the Waikiki Village Motel and the Holiday Shores uh, Retro Hotels in Myrtle Beach. Mr. Brennan's real estate design and construction experience assists with his project management and project development initiatives. Mr. Brennan. Thank you so much, Bob. I Clint, I need to get with you and update that resume, man. We're doing a lot here in Columbia and Central Midlands since that was posted on the Columbia website. It's, it's great to be here. Good morning to everyone. Um, smiling faces. Some of you may have been greeted as you arrived here at the facility with the I iconic smiley face storage tank out there. Um, I tell you, it's going to be exciting in the next three years to drive by on I-77 and see this wonderful facility surrounded by a huge solar array. It's been a long time in the making, and, and it, it, it's very exciting. Um, seeing everyone here today puts a smile on my face, and welcoming the EPA folks here to announce this fantastic grant that was a very competitive grant is even better. Uh, Mayor Rickman, Congressman Clyburn, thank you for your, your uh, support for these smart surfaces, uh, projects that are going to be happening over the next five years through this EPA grant. As board chair of the Central Midlands Council of Governments, I'm proud to see what local governments across the Midlands can do and how they can work collaboratively. Seven different counties and municipalities came together with more partners to come to work on up to 15 projects from this wonderful grant. Although each project on its own is, is a small step, together it's going to lead to a large regional impact, as Bob mentioned. Here in the Midlands, we've, we have experienced those extreme weather events with hot summers and devastating floods. Our region's economy is also buzzing. There's a lot of investment going on, billions of dollars of investments in electric vehicles, EV chargers, and solar. So now is the time. Now is the perfect time. When I think about our new projects under this Climate Pollution Reduction Grant, I see local governments playing an important and growing role in creating clean and resilient futures for everyone. Collectively, 
Our work, to, our work will cut pollution, increase resilience, combat extreme heat, and so much more. The COGS successful application for this grant, which you'll hear more about how competitive it was, is ultimately a reflection of the innovative community-driven solutions created by our local government members. I want to take a moment to thank the Central Midlands Council of Government staff who's here. If you raise your hand, thank you so much for working on this fantastic grant. I'm excited to see the stories that will emerge over the next five years as part of this program as they lead to our future for the Midlands with a lot to smile about. I want to take a moment and introduce the next speaker. I think everybody knows the next speaker, his passion, his love, his drive for this city, this county, and this Midlands. Daniel Rickman is the 71st mayor of Columbia, South Carolina. He's innovative, he's an entrepreneur, and he's dedicated to public service with a passion for improving the quality of life for everyone in this great city, county, and state. As mayor, Rickman represents the city of Columbia as a member of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, where he serves as an advisory board member and chair of the Energy Committee and participates in the Public-Private Partnership Task Force, which is huge, which is huge. He is also a member of Climate Mayors Network, the Smart Services Coalition, and the Mayor's Alliance to End Childhood Hunger. I tell you, this grant, this award for Columbia couldn't be anything uh, but uh, the, a good stepping stone for Mayor Rickman as he reaches out to really leverage public-private partnerships and sustainable efforts for our great city. So, Mayor Rickman. Thank you, Councilman, and uh, our Mayor Pro Tem, too. He wears so many hats uh, and does such a great job for our city. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to be here. This is an important announcement. Today, it's so important, and we want to thank our friends at Central Midlands Council of Governments for taking the lead on this climate pollution reduction grant opportunity. This is big, folks. This is stuff that we've been talking about for a long time, and as, as the city embraces using our CPAC, our citizens getting involved and planning ahead as we move forward, taking advantage of every opportunity there is out there to improve the quality of life of our citizens while impacting our environment, understanding that our natural assets are so important for us and that we got to think forward as we move ahead as we grow to be the number one city in South Carolina, especially in quality of life. I'm grateful to the EPA for developing these grants. I'm very thankful to our Congressman, Congressman Clyburn, for being the advocate for us to get this grant. This impact here will be incredible. We are the largest wastewater facility in the state of South Carolina right here at the Metro plant. Roughly about 80 million gallons a day. And we have been wanting to reduce our footprint. It is our biggest power use is right here. So having an opportunity to reduce our, our load on the grid, which opens up more opportunities for other businesses and other opportunities, but it also sets the pace. This is a city that is committed to being environmentally friendly. We're the first LEED certified city in South Carolina. We're at gold status. We want to be platinum, so I'm not, that's not wasted on me. But partially funding the solar farm here and then taking advantage of going after our smart surfaces, really looking at this reflective. As was mentioned earlier, we had a heat uh, island study done in 2022, August of 2022 actually, and it showed there was an 18 and a half percent differential. Why is that important to address? Because that affects every one of our residents. It's not just about power usage, it's about quality of life, it's about health. So as we continue to look at tree canopies, smart surfaces, reflective roofing, everything else, this gives us the opportunity to address that. That's just the beginning, folks. As we're out here, as we're going to capture our methane gas and turn, return that to the pipeline as a renewable natural gas, going back and looking at maybe adding an anaerobic digestion system here focused on food waste recycling. Each average person throws away 25 pounds of food a month. So you think about the waste products that are out there day to day, and we could be capturing that material and using it to power and reduce our footprint. If it's reconstituting our, um, I just lost my train of thought there for a second, uh, 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 reconstituting our, um, 
hydro plant. I don't know why I couldn't think of that today. As Bob mentioned earlier about the 2015 flood and that effect on it, that's 10 megawatts of power that we can put back into the community. It's also a historic. So, you know, that canal is over 150 years old, and there's only two that match like that in the state of South Carolina, Union and uh, here in Columbia, and they both feed off the Broad River. But it also, you know, taking advantage of all of those resources and putting that back in, getting us to the point where we can take that step to try to get to 100% renewable energy, which is hard in a hurricane state, folks. It's very hard, but we're going to make sure that we continue to focus on projects like that that move us forward. We also, finally, I have to add, we just distributed $50,000 to youth-led climate projects in Columbia via the Bloomberg Philanthropies Youth Climate Action Fund. And that opened up the opportunity us for access another $100,000. So getting our youth involved, not only in the high school level, but at the college level as we continue to work together to improve the quality of life of all citizens. And the only way we do that is taking advantage of these type of grants and opportunities and having folks like Congressman Clyburn who are advocates for our city and our state without question, always looking for us first and looking for the opportunity to help. With that, I'd like to, to introduce our congressman, which we really don't need to, he doesn't really need an introduction. As we all know, he is our congressman. Uh, nobody works harder for the citizens of South Carolina. He always puts his home state first but especially our community here. Uh, and his congressional district, if you look at it, it's always about the people first. Number one, how do we leverage assets to improve the quality of life at every level without blinking an eye anytime we call his office, he's right there for us. And I wanna thank his staff, and mostly I wanna thank the congressman for his continued support to allow us to take advantage of opportunities that are coming from the federal government to improve this quality of life here. As we know, he's been the House Whip, um, the first African American to serve so, uh, multiple terms as the Majority Whip, um, Democratic leader, but truly a leader of people. And with that, Congressman Clyburn, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks to all of you for being here today, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Bob, thank you. Uh, really, really uh, appreciate all that you do. Uh, I am really pleased to be here today. Uh, as many of you know, uh, the sixth congressional district that I proudly represent is an, an interesting district. Uh, the entire uh, peninsula of Charleston is in this district. And so when you read about climate change and you know what's going on down on the Battery, uh, it was my great honor to be there uh, several uh, months ago uh, when we announced this multi-billion dollar project. Uh, that we are uh, beginning to fund uh, to uh, hopefully inoculate the Charleston Peninsula from what we know to come. Climate change ain't no hoax. And those people who profess such, you should stay away from. Climate change is real. I don't know about these other hottest summers. But if there are two summers hotter than the one we just had, <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't around for it. I don't think I was. My memory may be failing me. I told someone uh, not long ago that on July 21st, this past July 21st, I celebrated the 45th anniversary of my 39th birthday. <laughs> uh, so I've been around uh, 84 years. Uh, so I don't know whether those other summers came. If so, I don't remember any summer as hot as this one. And I'll tell you something else I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember us ever having three 1,000-year storms in four years. Now, I don't know how you do that. Three 1,000-year storms. That's about climate change. And we've got to really deal with climate change and the impact uh, that that climate change is going to have and is having uh, on 
our economy, on our quality of life. And it requires uh, that we do the kind of thinking uh, that has gone into this grant. When I went over to the board uh, to have some of this explained to me, I was particularly interested in because I know the history of the Council of Government. I was sharing uh, some things that uh, may have come strange to uh, a few people. Now, I remember when the Council of Government uh, recall um, planning districts. Uh, I was around, uh, though not in the office of Governor McNabb, when it was a, a planning district in Governor West, uh, with whom I uh, worked, for whom I worked. Um, we changed it to councils of government in order to broaden uh, and uh, give more power uh, and influence uh, and make people work together to try to regionalize our approaches to stuff. You know, when I first got elected, uh, I had all these little communities coming to me. Everybody wanted the water system. Uh, there was one little county that made the application for three different water systems. I won't name the county, but they wanted three water systems. And I just told them, uh, we aren't going to do three water systems. Uh, if you all sit down in the same room and we can talk, maybe we can come up with one water system that will have enough customers to pay for it uh, and everybody uh, get their water from that one system. They finally got there. Uh, and that's what this kind of this project is all about. Because I looked on this board and I saw Saluda County, and, and I knew something, uh, still know something about the Council of Government. So I wanted to know uh, what does this mean, because uh, Saluda County ain't supposed to be in this, in this district. Uh, and then I was told, having Saluda County in this district, uh, this particular facility strengthened the application uh, to the point that we can stand here. Uh, maybe I heard no number announced. Am I supposed to announce the number? Uh, 8.7 8 .7 million dollars. Uh, you know, I, when you're in my business, they, they swear you the secrecy on so many things. In fact, there's something being announced tomorrow. I want so much to talk about that today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they tell me it's embargoed until noon tomorrow. So I'm going to honor that. So this has been boggled for a while. So it's no longer, in, in, no longer. if so, I just violated that. <laughs> but let me give you an example of why we have to really get serious about moving this country forward. You know, um, when I was a student down in South Carolina State, I studied a guy uh, name Alexis de Tocqueville. Now, some of you all uh, may have studied de Tocqueville. And, and you know, de, to de Tocqueville came to this country to study our penal system. And he said that he saw something magical about this country. And he went around to try to find out what that magic was. Uh, and I won't get into all that you will find in his two-volume work, but there's one little sentence uh, in those two books that I want to share with you because I think it's so important today. The Tocqueville wrote, America's greatness is not that it is more enlightened than any other nation, but rather because she has always been willing to repair her faults. I want you to think about that. That's what makes us great when faults pop up in our system. We need to sit down and work to repair those faults. I was in Lake City a couple of days ago, more than a couple of days ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And we were there to repair a fault. Because if you've ever been to Lake City, you know there's a railroad track that runs right down in the middle of Lake City. And all of us know why that railroad track is there. So one group of people could be on one side of the track, and the other group would be on the other side of the tracks. That's why that railroad track is there. And we have, in recent years, built these highways and by right down the middle of neighborhoods with people, some people on one side and on the other side. And what we are doing with these grants 
EPA, and others, is repairing those faults. So what we announced over in Lakes the other day, this railroad track that you put down here, and it was not an honorable thing to do, is now causing all the flooding because it's turned out to be a jetty. So all the water is bottled up there because of the railroad track flooding out everybody, and they want to get rid of the water. The only way you're going to get rid of this water is to repair this fault. That's what you got to do. The only way you're going to get these neighborhoods back together is to either tear down these highways or build, as I was in one state, um, I was up in Buffalo uh, two weeks ago. And what they're doing, they are now putting a tunnel uh, under these railroads and putting parks where those roads are and rejoining the communities with parks. So that all the communities on this side and that side, where this road is now, this is going to be a park and we're going to put a tunnel on it. So the cars who want to go, y'all go. But the people who want to live here, we now got a park that both sides can enjoy. Uh, hint, hint, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that is what this is. Uh, these kinds of grants is all about, repairing faults. How many of you have been up and down I-95? I-95 is a red highway. You know, we've been working now. Uh, the bridge across Lake Marion has been there, uh, I think, for 58 years. And, and that bridge has been out there for a long time. And everybody said, we want to uh, fix this bridge. We need to be widened uh, to six lanes rather than four that's there. We need to put pedestrian walkways across this bridge so people can walk uh, from Santee, South Carolina, uh, to the other side uh, of the lake, or run uh, if you have not had as many years as I've had. So whatever you want to do, bicycle trails, walking trails, running trails, we want to do that. And so we need $175 million from the federal government to do that. So the Highway Department came to me and says, <clears throat> Can you help us get $175 million? We're going to put in this grant for this raise grant because we want to do this bridge. I said, yes, I'm pleased to help. But let me tell you something. The town of Summerton, entire water system just failed. You all remember, the whole water system, gone. Now they've already got to go to wells. We got this big over in Orangeburg County, the Lake Marion Region Water Agency. I said, I can get real excited about this. If you will redesign this bridge and make it so that we can run pipes on this bridge, sufficient enough to get the water from Lake Marion in Orangeburg County over to Summerton in Clarendon County. They said, well, that's going to cost a lot of money. How much you got now? Well, they came back with a new design. So when we applied for the 175 million, we were able to say to the highway department, this is not just about getting people from New York to Miami. This is about getting water from Orangeburg County to Clarendon County. When I was out in Chicago for a little meeting a couple of weeks ago, someone came up to me from the Department of Transportation and said, I don't know why y'all did it, but putting that water system into this highway project carried the day. Now we're going to build a 300 and $50 million bridge. Why? Because we started thinking outside of the silos and trying to see how to kill more than one bird with a stone. That's what this project is all about. And I'm so proud of Janine uh, Gettle. She has been with the not quite as long as I've been on the she has been with the EPA for 36 years. And she is now uh, the acting administrator. Now, she has not told me that she wants to remove that acting from her name. Um, but um, she is in charge of eight states, 
and six uh, tribal governments being innovative, being creative, thinking outside of the silos. This is not her first trip to South Carolina with this kind of announcement. And I hope it's not her last trip with this kind of, of, of announcement. And the next time, I plan for it to be a little more than 8.7 million. With that, <laughs> Janine. Well, good morning. I'm going to talk to my team. You know, it's all about where you speak and what order. And who wants to follow Congressman Clyburn? Thank you, Congressman Clyburn. He is a, a great representative for your state, I know, but he is also a great uh, representative for the Environmental Protection Agency and supporting uh, our role in uh, protecting the environment across this country and across the southeast and certainly here in South Carolina. I want to thank the mayor and uh, the councilman, uh, the Columbia Water, uh, the council, um, the council of governments here, for having us here today. We're very pleased to be here today, and to announce an 8.7 million dollar grant uh, for work here in in this area on a whole host of things that will improve the resiliency of your environment, improve uh, uh, the, the place where people live, and um, really make a difference in this community and all of the communities it impacts. So my first role here is to say congratulations. Congratulations to all of you on this very significant accomplishment. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the, what, is called, what we call the Climate Pollution Reduction Grants, or CPRG. Um, these are grants that are playing a pivotal role in advancing climate action and environmental justice across our nation and here in our region. The CPRG is a program uh, and initiative funded under the Inflation Reduction Act. It's a landmark piece of legislation that the congressman was uh, supportive of and uh, aimed at accelerating our transition to a cleaner and more sustainable future. And we are very pleased that under President Biden and Vice President Harris, the EPA launched this program with a clear and ambitious goal to empower state, local, and tribal governments to collaborate and reduce pollution effectively. There was $5 billion allocated to this program, and it provides essential resources for states and cities and tribes to develop and implement strategies to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions and other harmful pollutants. It's not just funding in terms of a financial boost. It's transformative investment in our long-term climate resilience and economic growth. It supports a wide range of activities from power generation to transportation, while also promoting job creation, economic development, renewable energy sector, and spurring clean energy technologies. I am particularly thrilled to highlight the impressive progress that's been made here in the Midlands. Under the CPRG program, Columbia was first awarded a $1 million grant for planning purposes. They took that and used that to identify areas for investment and develop a solid foundation for future actions. Building on that success, the Midlands Council of Governments applied for and was selected to, see, to receive one of the highly competitive climate pollution reduction implementation grants. And why do I say highly competitive? Because we received 300 grant applications. We chose 25. So this is a significant accomplishment for the, the, for the Council of Governments, and we really want to congratulate you. This program emphasizes addressing the disproportionate impacts of climate change and pollution on our underserved, our vulnerable, and our disadvantaged communities. 
This is why we are especially proud of the Midlands Council of Government's Smart Surface Plus Solar, or S3 fund. Their innovative tiered match structure not only advances sustainability, but also ensures that the benefits of solar energy directly support historically underserved communities. This approach is a model for how we can drive positive change and reinvest those savings into local assistance programs. Looking ahead, the projects funded by the S3 Fund and EPA CPRG are projected to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by an impressive 27,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent over the next five years. This reduction will significantly enhance climate resilience and more importantly, improve public health outcomes across the Midlands. Before I conclude, I want to acknowledge Jory Fleming, whose remarkable efforts have been crucial um, to the success of this project. Jory dedicated, um, he's been dedicated and provided hard work and instrumental in advancing our climate goals, and we're excited to continue this journey as we work with this grant. I also want to thank Myra Reese and our partner, the South Carolina Department of Environmental Services, whose commitment to environmental sustainability um, and environmental justice in the Southeast and here in South Carolina are, is unwavering. In closing, the EPA's climate pollution reduction grants repre represent not just a funding opportunity, but a commitment to a sustainable future. And this application represents both of those, a commitment to a sustainable future here in the Midlands. Um, these collaborative efforts mean we're taking meaningful steps towards reducing climate pollution, promoting environmental justice, and building resilient communities. Thank you for your support in this effort, and together we can make a long-standing impact on our environment, ensure a healthier and more sustainable for future for all, and congratulations again to all of you on this significant accomplishment. We're very pleased. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Gettle, and uh, to all of our speakers. We really appreciate this and the opportunity to, to make this announcement and to host this, um, this media event. Thank you for coming. We appreciate that. Real change, real impact, at least for the city of Columbia, I can speak for us. You're going to see a two megawatt solar farm between where we're sitting and Interstate 77 in the next few years. You're going to see smart surface initiatives. We're really, really excited about those advancements, things that we've wanted to do for quite some time. These grant dollars really help facilitate and give us that momentum that we need.